Hello, hello. This is Coach Ikram, and welcome to our fourth video in the thermochemistry unit. This video is going to cover Hess's Law. In 1940, French chemist Germain Henri Hess, hopefully I said his name right, found that delta H in a reaction is going to be the same whether or not the reaction occurs in one step or it occurs in many steps. Most of the reactions that we're going to see will take more than one step before they're complete. So if you're looking at it together, delta H of the whole reaction is going to be the sum of the delta H's for each sub-reaction that you're looking at. Now how does that work? You're going to sort of solve it like a puzzle. When you're solving for delta H using Hess's law, you're going to have to manipulate the different sub-reactions in order to create the main reaction that you're looking for, the total reaction that you're looking for. The first thing you might have to do is you might have to reverse a reaction. When you do that, you're going to change the sign of your delta H for that sub-reaction. You might have to multiply a reaction by a common factor, 2, 4, 3, whatever it is, in order to calculate the value for delta H. So we're going to look at doing both of those things and trying to manipulate these sub-reactions to create one large total reaction that we're actually trying to find. So let's look at this example problem. It says, given the following reactions and their enthalpy changes, calculate delta H for the whole reaction. This right here is the reaction that we're going to be looking for. That's what we're trying to create. But in order for this reaction to take place, it actually goes through three sub-reactions that are written right here. <clears throat> and the way that I'm going to do this problem, and the way that I do it, is I just start with the first entity that I have. So I've got H2SO4 right here. Look for H2SO4 in your sub-reactions, okay? And H2SO4 is right here. The, the number of moles of H2SO4 is exactly the same. You've got one mole in your primary reaction that you need, and you've got one mole down here. So you don't need to multiply anything by a factor. However, in this sub-reaction right here, H2SO4 is a product we want it to be a reactant. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this entire reaction right here, and in doing so we're also going to flip this. So let's go ahead and rewrite that reaction. So now we want it to read H2SO4 yields H2S plus 2O2. And that delta H is instead of being negative 235.5 kilojoules, because we reversed it, it's now going to be positive 235.5 kilojoules. And I'm going to go ahead and cross this off because this no longer exists, so to speak. Let's look at our second piece. <clears throat> We've got SO3 right here. Let's find it in our subreactions. It's right here. It's on the correct side of the equation. It's they're both products, and they're both the same number of moles, so we don't have to multiply it, nor do we have to flip it. So this one is A-OK. -okay. Let's look at H2O. H2O, remember, it's a gas. Always note what state of matter it's in, because if you, sometimes you'll have reactions that have both H2O gas and H2O liquid, and you have to keep those, you know, separate. So we got H2O gas there. We have H2O gas here. <clears throat> both of them are products. Both of them are at one mole, so we don't need to multiply or swap this, so... That one's A-OK -okay as well. The next thing I'm going to do, and this is an intermediate step that you can, once you kind of get the hang of doing these problems, this is a step that you can skip or kind of take for granted a little bit. But I'm going to extend my page a little bit here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite all this reaction all these sub-reactions that I have, and I'm going to show everything on the product side, everything on the reaction side, and then I'm going to go ahead and cancel. So let's start with this first one. We've got H2S plus 2O2. Then I also have, on this one, I've got H2O as a, as a reactant. Down here, I've got H2SO4 as a reactant. And then on my product side, I have SO3 plus H2OL, and keep, yeah, keep in mind, make sure you put your, um, your, uh, states of matter, because remember here is actually a perfect example. You've got liquids and gases. So we have H2O liquid, then we also have, um, <clears throat> this was a liquid as well, sorry about that. And then we also have H2O gas, so plus H2O gas, plus H2S, plus 2O2. Notice I got those from right here. All right, so now I can look at that and I can actually cancel off anything that's on both the product side and the reactant side. So you notice we have an H2S here, 
and an H2S here. We have 2O2 here. We have 2O2 here. We have an H2O liquid here and an H2O liquid here. So we're left with H2SO4, SO3, and H2O gas. And if you look, that, oops, sorry, that is this. I'm making a mess of it, but that's what that is. We ended up with the reaction that we're looking for. That's basically, you can check your work. <clears throat> you can make sure, did I reverse everything that I needed to reverse? Did I multiply everything that I needed to multiply? Am I good to go? Yes, I'm good to go. So now, these enthalpies right here, I'm going to add them together. So I've got negative 207 plus 44 plus positive 235.5, and I'm going to get my total enthalpy for this reaction is going to be 72.5 kilojoules. And that's Hess's law. So let's go ahead and do another example. All right, this one says calculate the heat of the reaction when carbon as a diamond changes to carbon as graphite. So if we're looking at this, I'm going to just start with the first one just like I did the first time around. I'm going to look for diamond. Diamond is right here in this sub-reaction. It is a reactant. It is also the same number of moles. So this change in H is A-OK. -okay. Now let's look at the second entity. We've got graphite carbon here. We have graphite carbon down here in this second sub-reaction. Um, Unfortunately, it's on the wrong side. This graphite is a reactant, and we need it to be a product. So this entire reaction needs to be swapped. So it's going to be CO2 yields carbon graphite plus O2. And I'm going to cross this one off. And that means if I swap it, then this becomes a positive 393.5. So I'm going to cross that off. If I was to rewrite both of my equations, doing what I did before, I've got my carbon diamond plus O2 plus CO2. Those are, that's everything that's a reactant. And on the right-hand side, I've got CO2 as a product. I've got my carbon graphite. And I've got my O2. And you'll notice that my O2s cancel my carbon dioxides cancel, and I'm left with exactly what I'm looking for, which is the carbon diamond and the graphite. So that means I did my job correctly, and so now I can just simply add up my enthalpy for this subreaction plus my enthalpy for this reaction. So I'm going to end up with negative 1.9 kilojoules. All right. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and look at this one. This one's a little bit trickier. Um, it says calculate the heat of the reaction for the following. We've got nitrogen and oxygen, um, and we've got um, dinitrogen pentoxide. So let's look at what we've got happening here. So I'm going to start with N2 right here. Okay. So we got two N2. Let's find where we've got N2 down here. So we've got N2 right here. Okay. Notice there's only one mole of N2 down in the subreaction. There's two moles of N2 up here, which means this entire reaction right here has to be multiplied by a factor of two in order to work. So I'm going to put a two here. I'm going to put a two here. I'm going to put a four here. That means this number has to be multiplied by two. And so when I go ahead and do that, that becomes 362 kilojoules. Okay, let's look at the 502. Now, when we look at this, you're going to notice there's O2s everywhere. We've got an O2 right here. We've got one here. We've got one here. There's a lot going on. If you see an entity from this original equation that's in more than one of those sub-equations, let it go for a second. Just leave it till the end. It's actually going to work itself out, or you'll have to do just some simple manipulations to make it work. But leave that for the end because you see it in more than one place. So we're going to skip ahead. And we're going to go look at this dinitrogen pentoxide here. We've got that right here. It is in the correct side. It's both products, and it's also at the correct factor. That's two of them and two of them. So this is actually A-OK. -okay. <clears throat> so now, let's go back to that oxygen and make sure that we you know, don't have any problems. Remember, we're going to want five oxygens on the left-hand side. Right now, we've got two here plus one here, so that's three. Those two can't be changed, because if I manipulate either one of those subreactions, I mess with the things I've already fixed. I don't want to do that. But I haven't messed with this subreaction yet. So in order to get five oxygens, I'm going to go ahead and times this subreaction by two. Because then, 
and then this is going to be multiplied by 2 as well. Let's put that becomes um, negative 2, 28. So then when I do that, now you notice I've got 2 plus 1 plus 2, which is 5 oxygen. So I do end up with the number of oxygens that I'm going to need on the reactant side. So once I've got that all done, I can come over here, draw my line, add up my enthalpies. Remember, Hess's law is simply the sum of your enthalpies. And when you add these all up, keep the negatives in mind, you get 24 kilojoules. All right, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do this one on your own. Okay, let's go over it. Looking at what we've got here, we've got two carbons. I've got carbon right here. There's only one of them, so that means I need to multiply this entire reaction by a factor of two, 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 and then multiply this by two. And then that is going to become negative, I'm going to write it off to the side, negative 787 kilojoules. Okay, let's look at the H2. We've got H2 here. We've got one H2 here. They're both reactants, and they're both at the same factor. Check. And then we've got C2H2. And if I come down here, I've got C2H2 right up here in this subreaction, but it's on the wrong side. It's a reactant, and I need it to be a product, so I'm going to take this entire subreaction, and I'm going to flip it. So it's going to be 2CO2 plus H2O yields... C2H2 plus 5 halves oxygen. And that means this thing right here is going to become a positive 1299.6 kilojoules. So now I've got this enthalpy, this enthalpy, and this enthalpy, and that's what I'm going to be adding up. <clears throat> and if you go ahead and put these, if you were to check your work and rewrite your equation so you can cancel everything out, you will notice that the 5 halves plus the 2 oxygens and the one half oxygen right here are going to actually end up canceling each other out. So you will end up with this as your final um, equation. So adding up the total enthalpies, you're going to get 226.7 kilojoules. And there we go. So hopefully you took good notes, write down any questions that you have. Hopefully this makes some sense. Um, again, it's kind of a puzzle. Um, it doesn't involve a lot of... Um, uh, it, it just involves kind of keeping track of what you're doing and making sure that you're notating when you cross something off and when you um, manipulate something and fix something. And other than that, um, hopefully it makes some sense. So come in with good questions, and um, yeah, that's it. Sorry, I did this kind of strangely. Bye-bye.